Hello and welcome to um, my very first webinar for FX Street. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you basically through a course I wrote many years ago. Okay, an introduction to technical analysis. Um, okay, so we've got an international introduction to technical analysis. I started off in the early 80s on the life floor where I found that technical analysis really worked. Other people were using different rate, different ways of trading the market. FX Street, Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, loads and loads of figures coming out. And I, I just thought there had to be more to how a market works than that. And I, I couldn't understand it. And I was trading the bonds, bond markets at the time, the 30-year bond markets. And everybody was selling it. And they'd all have to buy it back on the close. So it was like quite, quite amazing that, that this, this happened. Like it baffled me. And that's why I thought it really had to, there had to be another way. One day, I was walking behind the screen, behind the scenes, and on the life floor. And I came across this little guy and he was, he was writing charts and doing whatever. And I said to him, you know, what, what are you doing? I was waiting for money supply to come out on a Thursday night. Didn't have a clue what he was doing. And um, he told me he was, he was a chartist. And he said that, you know, um, the reason the bond market was, was going up is that for seven years it had been in a downtrend. And then it had gone sideways for like three years. So everybody had made money out of trading the range. And when the bond market broke up, above um, its, its band of sideways trading. Everyone thought, hey, you know, it's higher. So the higher it goes, but look, if we wanted to sell it at 68.00, for example, why don't we want to sell it at 68.40, 68.70? And, and this is what they were doing. And it was a self-fulfilling um, muck-up, really, because the more they sold, the more they had to buy back on the close. The following day, the market was higher again. The more they sold, they had to buy back on the close. And I, I actually thought there was an easier way of trading and making money. And I decided to make, you know, to have a look at this and see if I could incorporate what he was doing into my trading. And I did. So there wasn't much about technical analysis back in those days. So what we decided, I decided, was to make a, I'd t self teach myself, you know, because there was no one around in, in England that, that could possibly do, you know, what this little guy was doing. Um, so I did, I went into, I went into it, I bought books, I sat there, I drew charts, um, and here I am 30 years later, obviously I can't work a computer, <laughs> But show me a chart and I can show you exactly you know, what, what was going on. So we have a little brief history of it, um, where we was before. History. Now, as I said, the first um, charts we know were 18th century, 17th century. Nowadays, at the beginning of the, of the 9th, 20th century, we know that there um, were three people who are attributed today with, with the way that we, we write and, uh, and chart the market. Um, this is Charles Dow. Um, here he is. Charles Dow, you've got Ralph Elliott, Elliott Wave, the Gann Theory. Not so sure about Richard Wyckoff, but hey. But this is, this is um, these are the, the history of why we still use little bits of these people's work today. Um, now, what is technical analysis? Why, why do we use it? Why is it so important to, if you don't believe in it, at least be aware of it? The, the thing why, why I use it, and, you know, not just being a technical, sorry, I've got to water. <coughs> not just being a technical analyst, 
<coughs> I'm a technical trader. So it's much more important for me, I think, to be aware of where I can enter a market, where I can exit a market. And it makes you have an educated decision, if you like. It, ta it takes away some of the emotion of trading, which is really what can screw up most traders today. We like we all like to think we know where it's going and what the market's going to do. And really, we do if we are aware of specific big chart levels. If, you, if you're not aware of them, you can't, you can't really incorporate all the tools to make an informed decision versus a chart. Right. Now, the other thing about, about charting is that or technical trading, it does it does not necessarily show an end of or start a bull or a bear cycle. That is normally I can't say this really, but normally started by fundamental analysis. But what technical analysis does is to actually show you patterns um, and give you indicators of, of a trend reversal you have to you have to be aware of these reversal patterns now it doesn't really matter if you're a very short term trader and you're looking at a 5 minute chart or a monthly chart the rules don't change they really don't change so if you can apply if you can learn just a little bit of of technical analysis you are in a far better um, position to make profits out of these highly volatile markets. To date, more than any other period where I've worked and or traded, today these technical analysis and charts will help you much more um, what what could you what can you say about what can you say about I think going into all um, this is going to be a very basic uh, seminar because there's so much that you need to learn or, sh or should learn and I don't want to sort of bulldoze you in it on your first ever webinar with me anyway so this is what technical analysis does. It removes the emotion of trading, looks at the psychology of supply and demand, uses a various range of technical indicators, momentum, RSI, moving averages, stochastics. The more you watch the market, the more you look at these indicators, the more you, you actually can feel, getting carried away now, but the more you can feel a market, the better off you will be um, because you'll understand it more you can't just look at a fundamental figure that comes out and automatically know where the market is going to go there is no absolutely no fundamental piece of information that can make the euro dollar stop at 131.20 it doesn't happen this is a chart point this is where people are looking to take profits to go short this is the target from a few weeks ago so you're getting to the stage now where people are going to start selling the euro not through any fundamental um, analysis it's purely on a weekly bar chart um, I can show you this bar chart now if you can see if you can see that you can see you've got an inverse head and shoulder pattern okay which is this pattern I'm looking at now this one here now we know that the market has got a neckline here we know then that the 200 week moving average comes in here but we know there's going to be a lot of selling pressure but we're also looking at this down here okay this is a stochastic. If on the weekly charts, they are beginning to turn bullish. 
So if we do get this break of this inverse head and shoulders, you can see that the target is going to be, and it's really easy to calculate it. You calculate that high, you minus that low, you get left with a number of points. You then add those points to the point of breakout, which is the 131. Um, it, say we've, we break at 131.70. We're looking to go to 137. Now, that's not a, that isn't a fundamental view. That is a, um, that's a chart point view. This is what we look for. We're not looking for, um, we're not looking to, to, to sell them. We're not looking for other things. We're just looking at this chart point, ignoring all the fundamental, fundamental data. So, talking about fundamental data, what one, how do we pick the, um, how do we pick which figures to look at, which figures not to look at? Well, the fundamental data determines the intrinsic value of the stock. It looks at the economy, it looks at so many, many indicators, news driven, earthquakes and natural disasters, as we know in the last two years, we've had our fair share of that. How can you gauge, how can you take an educated view about trades in the market based purely on the fundamental data? It is virtually impossible and it is open to so many um, so many blips in the market, you know. So, if you are a fundamental trader, it's in your interests to look at technical analysis as well. Look at the technical stuff. Use technical analysis of charts to do to make the right trading call. Chart patterns, head and shoulders, double bottoms, double tops. We're not concerned with why the market moves. How? That is that is our only concern. We're not interested in last month's figures. We believe that technical analysis absorbs all the fundamental analysis. And I've, I've done this for so long. I'm quite passionate about this. I'm probably going to annoy every economist that comes on to this um, website, but um, that's the way it is. So I think that to just be a fundamental trader you're missing out on so much and you really do need to incorporate every single thing that the, a market can show you and that's in the price recognition it's in the it's already in the market so price trends now 90 percent of the time or 85 percent of the time markets go sideways that's the nature of the beast it does it goes sideways when you get onto a trend then obviously you, you want to maximise your profits. So in a bull trend, for example, you'd be buying on pullbacks, which is significant chart levels, previous highs, Fibonacci retracements. We'll go more into them a little bit later. The reverse happens in a bear market. You'd be selling rallies, still selling on pullbacks on Fibonacci's. Previous lows become resistance. So, you know, it's, it's totally the opposite, but still, still very much, um, still very much, this is when we're trending. In a, in a sideways market, it's quite easy, really. All the stochastics, so you, you, you get the, you get the, the um, sideways um, action. You sell at resistance, buy at support. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Um, but, but that's basically what you should do if it's, if it's trading a range, it's trading a range and that, so we need to find out how to, how to, train, to trade that range normally three highs in the same place three lows in the same place will determine a sideways market this applies across all time frames from five minutes to a month now history repeats itself there is there is nothing more true than this, this, which is why we're all here. History does repeat itself. So you can see a market, you can see a market going going higher. It doesn't matter 
um, bulls and bears will still charge in and out of the market. That's just human psychology. Um, and the human psychology makes us do the same as what we did before. So you see this constantly working throughout various markets. You know, it is a very psychological, very psychological thing. So you've got the short term traders versus the longer, bit medium term traders, bit longer term traders. But all in all, they are feeding off each other to make a market work each day. Psychology. You know, and it is so important. I cannot stress how much, how important it is. It really is. More, I've, I've learned more about psychology of the market over 30 years. Uh, you were so sort of naive going back 30 years. But I've learned a lot about market psychology. And if you're all the right way round, the wrong way round, if you're all short, you're going to get a short squeeze. And it just more so now than ever with the elbow systems, they're searching to take the stops now. So if you use charts and you place your stops accordingly you, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be bipped out of a, of a of a winning trade you have to go that little bit further now to m incorporate these algo systems you know they've always been there black box systems it was back when I was at Midland Bank they've always been um, somebody somewhere wanting to um, wanting to create a new way of mathematically trading the market. And these algo systems are really, really important, you know, because they do create um, liquidity. They probably, it's a bit like the old, on the life floor, the old, not so old, but you know, the locals. They were there to create liquidity for the banks. The banks were virtually always the same way around. And if it hadn't been for the local trader, the business would have been quiet. And I think it's the same with the algo systems, the high frequency traders. They they're there in the market. Use them. You know, don't be going against them. Don't fight against them. Use them and use them wisely because I don't think they're going away. But I do believe that um, if you if you're a good trader, you will you will make money. Whatever I mean, you will make money using charts. So now we've got another little thing. You've got the, the retail trade. I mean, when I first started, this was, well, it wasn't going to happen, you know. But now you've got the retail trader who can sit at home and he can, um, he's got his computer, he gets, he's got a trading platform, he's got all the information as, as, as far as he can. What he's got then, he's, he's, got loneliness that's the problem and you're out on the limb on your on your own you don't have um, you don't have the comfort if you like of a dealing room a, a, a forum whatever it is you're just sat there on your own and it's a very personal thing is a trade once you've hit that button okay you're in it you've took the decision to buy or to sell you instigate that trade, and this is where it all goes wrong. You start to stress, are we right, are we wrong? All the insecurities of a middle-aged movie star take hold, and we start to panic. And do you know what? It doesn't matter how long you do it. Seriously, we all go through these same emotions, if you like. And really, technical trading should be have the stress taken out of it. It takes the emotion away. It doesn't if you're sitting there watching it constantly we become subject to fear and greed the worst possible worst two words in in a trader's life fear and greed fear that the, the market's going to go against you greed as to when it it goes into profit you don't take the profit because you, you think it's going to go further what you should do what you should do is once you've taken, before you've taken a trade on, where's your stop loss, where's your profit? Put those in, in the market on your trading platform. 
walk away. You've done everything you can. You've rationalised this trade. You, you're, you're right there. You've looked at the statistics. You're moving averages. You know, you've done everything correct and you're now, you're now in it. Don't sit there and stress over it. You know, just keep your stops in and, and go and do something else. Don't, don't go away from your original thought, okay? And remember that we all work under this emotional and psychological stress. It's how you use it to your advantage that, would, that will make it better. Got a little loan traded there, see? Oh. When I worked on the life floor, well, I mean, I've just briefly touched on this before, but people that have worked on the life floor with me will agree, you do get the crowd, and you're not on your own thinking. You see one of the big locals, they come in, they buy 500 bomb contracts or five, 600 guilt contracts. You'll see all the out the outside perimeters, they were like, yep, yeah, mine, 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 mine. And then you are, you are, you are part of that crowd, okay? You become as one, you move the same, you discuss your trade, um, you, you're one of the clique, you know, you're, you're there. So what happens? It could be beneficial or catastrophic, because if you think, or the crowd thinks the market's going to go higher, and it doesn't, it sets off a chain reaction, you know, you can only hold that position for so long. And once somebody, somebody says, well, you know what, that's not, mm, not really a great idea now, is it? So he'll sell out his longs, and the guy next to him will go, oh, oh, well, look, he's done that. He sells out his longs, and before you know it, there's no profit left, and you're back to square one, if not worse. And one of the biggest rules in trading is you should never, never um, let a winning trade turn into a losing trade. You really, sh that's, it's risk management and it's much, you know, it's always, you can take your profit, you can always make profit, it's when it goes wrong that, that it's going to cause a problem. So, in any market, you've always got the bulls versus the bears. It's, it takes two sides to make a part market. It takes both a buyer and a seller to actually transact a trade. They've got to be willing to buy at the same price. You know, whatever you decide, you have become a bull or a bear at that particular stage. And that can be quite hard to, it can be quite hard to stick with that view through the day, but if you've done your homework, your background, your research, you've made, you've made the right decision, you know, predicting the crowd. I believe strongly that to understand technical an analysis, we have to learn to predict the crowd. We see trends and cycles appear throughout all the markets, chart patterns form, and as we believe, this chart is technical traders, whatever you want to call us, we believe that history repeats itself so that what happened before will happen again. And that's how we can predict where the market is going. You know, we don't have a crystal ball, but we know what we're doing. You know, we, otherwise we wouldn't be here all these years later. But we do know what we're doing, and we do want people to listen to us. Please don't listen to the first 10 minutes of this seminar, because seriously, it really wasn't good. But hopefully, we've got through that now, um, and it's, it's not been so bad. Okay. So, if you do see a major support or resistance level broken, right, the crowd will react, and it will react to the same as what it did in another year. A head and shoulder pattern is negative. Therefore, you will get people wanting to sell if the head and shoulder pattern breaks. Vice versa, we're looking at the bullish one, on, on the euro, you know, we know that this this is this is how we can predict because we've been doing it a long time, and you know we we are comfortable in this environment where we can recognise a pattern, which does enable us to maximise profits and limit losses, and that's what we need to do. You know, I've seen it time and time again. 
and it works. So if something works, you know, great. Don't now we can do this across every single market. Doesn't matter. We can do it for bond markets. We can do it for currencies. We can do it for anything. Look what I've put up there. It doesn't matter. You know, who is not aware of the recent two-year uptrend in um, in gold? You know, didn't do anything. Absolutely nothing for years. As we know, our chance of sold. He obviously didn't look at the gold chart because he sold our gold reserves at the bottom of the range. But hey ho. Not a problem, but we just didn't go anywhere, and we broke higher from something like two eighty dollars to three forty dollars, and we have never really looked back on gold. You know, it's just gone up and up and up, and of course we have corrections. We have corrections daily, but if you look at the gold market over quite a long period of time, you can see that it is still in an uptrend, and you know, I've got every faith that in years to come. We are, we're going to see four thousand dollars on gold. That's just what I think. You know, I don't see, I don't see any reason to sell gold longer term. I think it's going to continue on an uptrend. Although, you know, you've got to be a bit careful of the pullbacks because gold is quite a drastic market. So that's basically it, really. Technical analysis main strengths are they react fast to changing markets. We cover all time frames from five minutes to monthly charts. Teacher's discipline can be used in all markets. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar and um, look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you. Goodbye.